Are you nervous now, Nick? Under a minute to go before the grand final here in San Francisco. This is the Mubudla Sale GP Season 3 Grand Final. This is a race for $1 million. Aggressive from Slingsby. Dives across, looking for that inside position. Ainsley's hooked. Ainsley's going to be slow and driven off out the back on board Great Britain at the moment. I think the best two starts are going to be New Zealand and Australia for here. Watch for the line to turn white. We go in the million dollar race. What a start, Australia and New Zealand, perfect. It's New Zealand with a slightly faster angle to mark one, but the battle is on. It's Australia and New Zealand as the old rivals get together one more time. We're getting closer and closer to mark one, and you're not sure what's going to happen. Australia is alongside New Zealand. They're overlapped. Australia has the right of way. They can luff New Zealand all the way to the right, turning them into the wind. Here, they could force them off the foils, and that would stop their boat. You can't help but think that that situation in Saint-Tropez, where Pete luffed Tom and put them into a big crash, wouldn't be going through his mind thinking, if I could make a luff right now that takes them out, it would have been a really easy win for him. Tom gently lost New Zealand. Pete turns slightly away, but the Kiwis continue to resist strongly. Oh, Jesus. To the boundary, to the boundary, to the boundary. Coming up again. The first love he reacted to, he had to. Tom tries it again, but this time Pete doesn't react. That's right, and that's because they're not overlapped anymore. It means New Zealand is ever so slightly ahead of Australia. The second laugh, he didn't react at all, and I had to quickly go to plan B and bear the boat away hard to try to keep that inside spot. Tom has done it! Australia's running away with it! New Zealand has been left out the back! All the things that Tom did were very calculated, very, very clever. He could have got impatient and tried to really put New Zealand behind like he did with GBR, but he just thought, Keep the race going. I'm in a really strong position tactically. Come on, guys, come on. He really analyzes the situation well, can see the big picture. He's really in that zone at the moment. I think the big events really bring that out of him. As the Aussies were laughing, the New Zealand team, it felt like a really good opportunity for us to dive down the inside and get back into the race, which we did. This is an opportunity for Ainsley. Ainsley will be back in the race here at Mark 1. Come on, Ben! We did well on New Zealand then. We gained a few metres, but then I look over my left shoulder and Ben Ainsley's just all of a sudden moved into second place. Now we need to focus our attention from New Zealand over to Ben and the British. Whoever was in second place, we're going after you. In this game, with these boats, this style of racing, you never give up hope, because it only takes one mistake from the other team and suddenly you're back in. Tom is defending against Ben. It's very, very tight. Tom's defending against Ben. Ben's trying to keep the game nice and close, waiting for a mistake. And that leaves New Zealand out of sync as, like, the free radical trying to find a way to get back into it. Crucial move here is Burling is taking the left turn at the bottom. He maybe Ooh. thinks he's seen more wind the other way, and it's going to be all about who's read the wind best at this stage. Tide has turned, the wind is changing. That right-hand side was working so much all day. But look at this. The Kiwis have now moved into second place ahead of Great Britain. Big gain. They found more wind in by the shore. It hadn't been there before, but Burling spotted it, and he's now back within 100 metres. We fell out of the pressure. We got overtaken by New Zealand. At that point, we were struggling. Ben is pushing hard to try and stay in the race, but whoa, they fly too high. They crash down. Oh, no, the Brits are out of the race. All right. This is the last stretch before turning towards the finish line. New Zealand is following Australia closely. But I believe the Kiwis are on the fastest side of the track. This is going to go down to the wire. What we thought was going to happen there. <laughs> um, got a really nice shift, kind of got right back within in range and then took a few shifts up the middle at the end. And, you know, with that, we are able to get close enough, we could really put the pressure on them. All of a sudden, they started eating into our lead and they got closer and closer and closer and... Uh... It's all about whether anyone makes a mistake now, Todd. This is Australia's to lose. 
As we approached that top mark, we were gaining on them big time. We were linking it together. We were coming right at them. Two more maneuvers, and we will be at the finish line. No mistakes allowed now. And the Kiwis made the perfect tag. Pressure's on, Tom. Australia tax. So far, so good. Oh, they're going to stay Australia on the force. It down. Oh, he's just, he's got to stay above 30. What are we doing? Oh, my Lord, he's off the foils. This has given New Zealand a chance. He's going to have to turn again, and he's going to be slow when he turns. Advantage New Zealand here. This could go to the wire, Todd. New Zealand's coming at them so fast. Australia, not only have they fallen off the foils, but they have to execute another manoeuvre and try get on the foils before that mark. Otherwise, they're going to lose it in, you know, in the last couple of metres before the turning mark. And I, I couldn't believe it. I, I... Turning. We knew we were trying for the inside overlap at the mark to try and tack on the ley line and get inside them. It felt like the whole world was closing in on me. We had this lead for so long. We led the whole race. We'd sailed the perfect race. They just were closing, closing, closing. We had one more maneuver to, to get through. Get up, team! Pressing hard, pressing hard. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Australia have got to keep clear here. New Zealand stay on the foils. What do Australia do? We did the final manoeuvre and they were up on the foils. We weren't on the foils. And I remember just seeing the metres tick down. It all happens within five seconds, eight seconds maybe, and Liv and I on that side of the boat had, a, had one shot at them. They're going to struggle to stay foiling on board Australia. On the inside, it's New Zealand. New Zealand, if they could get overlap, wow! If they get the overlap here, we, we lose. We, we lose the season, we lose this race, we lose a million dollars, we lose everything. No overlap! No overlap! No overlap! No overlap! No overlap. We do feel like we have the right to win. We feel like, I don't know if it's in our DNA as Australians or Australian sailors, but we feel that we're the best in the world. Come on! Come on! It went from about 30 metres down to 10, 5, 4. And then all of a sudden, I remember seeing the boats equalise. Come on, come on, come on, you got this! New Zealand's so close to getting the overlap. <laughs> no, Slingsby holds on. He leads oh. at mark five. And it stopped. The, the distance stopped coming down. Might have got to three metres. And then all of a sudden, it started ticking up. And we were in the clear. And I knew that was the moment that we'd won. Tom is ahead. The Australians have made it. This is their golden moment. Gate five is now their golden gate five. This gate is worth one million dollars. Yeah! Yeah! The two-time reigning and defending champions, they can see the finish line. The checkered flag is there. The Kiwis are gonna run out of water. Oh, the Australian dynasty is still intact and the three-peat is now complete. For me, that was just um, a fantastic final race. If you've ever watched a sailing boat race, that was the one to watch because it was, you know, three of the greats really fighting it out against each other. Yeah. It just made me so envious in the boat watching them race and just thinking, you know, man, I'd, I'd love to be there racing with those guys.
<laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, you did it's such a good, good job, boss. Good, good luck. I think Tom's certainly writing his own chapter in the history books. I think in, you know, a couple of decades, maybe we'll hear someone tell the story of watching Tom Slingsby win for the third time in San Francisco in 2023. How do you create a winning culture? That's the million billion dollar question. Maldives will now present the Australian Sail Jumping Team with a Yacht Master Oyster Perpetual. We need to figure out what we're doing now that sets us apart to make us win in these crazy circumstances. We continuously find a way to win when our backs are against the wall and I wish I could sort of freeze this moment in my sporting career for, for the rest of the time because I'm going to look back when I'm retired, look back at these moments and, and know that this was the peak of my, my sporting career, peak of my life. Sail GP season four is coming up. Undoubtedly, Tom Slingsby and Team Australia are going to be the franchise to beat. You can't argue with that, and you certainly have to take your hat off and, and say, you know, congratulations. As much as we want to beat them, you have to realise when another team's done a better job than you have, and try and learn from that. How can we get to that level? How can we beat them? We've done an amazing job building the team. What's the gutter? We couldn't get the job done today. You know, just give us more motivation to, for the future. Quentin is probably pissed off now. It's good for him. You can see what is the level that he has to come up now. It's good. It shows that I still have some work to do. I don't have to retire tomorrow morning. Plenty of surprises for season four. A new German team will be joining the fleet, and they've been testing different F-50s here in San Francisco. In their faces when they came back, I saw, of course, a big smile because they have been out sailing probably faster than they have ever been in their life. But I also saw fear. Can't wait for season four. Jimmy Spithill is going to have a serious uphill battle to turn around his USA team. The grace period for teams on the bottom end of the table is up. Remember, you've got drivers such as Nathan Outridge looking off from the sidelines. And more importantly, the big four will be going blow for blow in 12 Grand Prix across the globe. Beating the Australians was going to take a superhuman effort, but all these crews are capable. Who will challenge for the throne? Who will send the first attack? Will the king defend his title? The fight is on. <laughs>